So recently, I've been playing a lot more Battlefield 4, and last week actually I posted a video called Urban Combat. If you didn't watch that, you should totally go and watch it. And despite my reservations launching the game for pretty much the first time in a good year or so, I've been pleasantly surprised by my experience playing in some of the servers. The game still has a very healthy player base on PC and the two current generation consoles, that's the PS4 and the Xbox. Xbox One, and surprisingly, if you still have a PS3 or an Xbox 360, there are some people playing there as well. The game is nearly five years old now, and that's a true testament to the work that DICE did during the time where Battlefield 4 was still the main Battlefield game. And I think I have an idea about what is keeping people coming back and playing Battlefield 4 still after all of this time. For me, Battlefield 4 gave the community a lot more to work with than what Battlefield 1 does. Certain features enabled the wider community to carve out their own segment within Battlefield 4 and play with like-minded gamers on a regular basis. Battlefield 1 doesn't give players that option in anywhere near the capacity that I think it should do. The third-party server support in Battlefield 4, despite its complexity to newcomers if you didn't really know how to use it, gave clans and groups of gamers the tools they needed to create an experience within the Battlefield ecosystem that they wanted to have game after game. Now I'm fully aware that the tools available for PC far outstripped those of console on Battlefield 4, but the premise remains that tools were in place to allow anyone to create their own flavour of Battlefield 4 and then invite their friends and other gamers to come in and experience that with them. Battlefield 1, on the other hand, ripped away that control almost completely and replaced it with a first-party service run directly by Dyson EA in an attempt to create a more consistent Battlefield experience and centralised support for players looking to run their own servers. Apparently, they could also ensure a greater level of quality when it came to renting servers as well. Now let me say here, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a publisher or a developer looking to try and change the way that people play the games that they make. They make the game at the end of the day, and they design it in such a way in the hopes the community will play it that way. And then creating tools to help guide the community into that way of playing is totally fine. It's just the manner in which the Battlefield 1 system did that that I think rubbed the community up the wrong way a little bit. And the warning signs were there even before Battlefield 1 launched. The community made it very clear that the system DICE and EA were adopting for Battlefield 1 didn't reflect or even match the level of customization and control that they had in previous iterations of the franchise. And they were afraid that if they didn't get that customization and that control back, that they'd start to see their smaller subsections of the community die off. And from my own experience and having spoken to friends of mine who used to run their own communities and clans for Battlefield, that is exactly what happened. Lots of smaller communities now no longer exist in the Battlefield franchise. Now, Battlefield 1's rental server system didn't arrive until, I think, a month after the launch of Battlefield 1, if my memory serves me correctly. And when it did arrive, it arrived with the beta label just plastered all over it. This, I think, rang alarm bells for many admins and community leaders out there who'd been waiting to see what DICE and EA would deliver to them in terms of tools. Now, the idea was at the time that more and more features would be added along the way through various patches, giving players who wanted to rent servers more and more control. And while we did get more features as time went on, I don't think the end goal was ever achieved for Battlefield 1. We're still not at a point today with Battlefield 1 where players have the level of control that they did in Battlefield 4, specifically on the PC platform with Procon controls. And Battlefield 1 has been out on the market for over 18 months now. Battlefield 4 had all of this server control from the start and there was no waiting around to see if more features might be added in the future. The system in place, renting third-party servers and controlling them with Procon tools, was the standard on PC and worked perfectly in the eyes of most people who were renting servers. It gave them the opportunity to create experiences that their sub-community would like and gave them the space to enjoy those experiences match after match. 
Battlefield 1, in my view, sought to do the exact opposite and give DICE and EA more control about how the game should be played. Which, as I said, is not an issue if it's done correctly, as long as you implement that in the right way. Here in Battlefield 1, it wasn't implemented properly at all. For example, DICE introduced hard player limits for game modes in Battlefield 1. Rush was limited to just 24 players, Team Deathmatch and Domination as well, Conquest being locked to 64 players only. This was DICE taking control. However, when renting servers, if an admin decided to mix modes and say run 3 maps on Conquest and 2 on Rush, the server player count would automatically be lowered to the lowest player number game mode, in this case Rush, but it still proceeded to charge the admin the same price as somebody renting a server only running Conquest where the player count would be much, much higher. This understandably annoyed quite a lot of people, and still to this day, that is the case. Nothing has been done here to remedy that situation. So not only had the power the admins once had been significantly reduced, they were being hit with arbitrary price increases if they tried to use some of the limited power they were actually being offered. Just sounds completely backwards when you talk about it. Having an admin dashboard, having VIP lists, having kick and ban functions, these are core pillars of server control for admins. And Battlefield 1 failed to deliver those until well after the launch of its server system. I mean, kick and ban is extremely important for a server admin. It gives the server admin the opportunity to police their own community and potentially root out griefers, toxic players, or even cheaters from the servers that they own. Admins didn't have those controls and therefore weren't fully able to control their communities. The rental server system that was provided just after the launch of Battlefield 1 was basic at best. It was a beta product. And I think it's really telling that the system is still in beta, 18 months after the launch of Battlefield 1. That's ridiculous in my opinion. At this stage in Battlefield 4's life cycle, the development team were working on stabilizing issues for Battlefield 4. We have to remember that game was extremely buggy for at least the first 18 months of its life, but the title had released five DLCs to the community that were still playing the game, and it had a fully fledged server system that enabled communities to run directly alongside DICE's own development process. Battlefield 1 has struggled since the launch of the game to engage players and with a spotty DLC schedule and almost complete lack of community tools to allow players to create their own experiences, there really is little wonder why the game has suffered so badly with player retention. Battlefield 4, yes, did have its problems, but it definitely kept a player number much higher than Battlefield 1's for a lot longer than Battlefield 1. Looking to the future now, I really do hope that DICE has learned from their experience with Battlefield 1 and the server platform that they provided to players. To sum it all up, it just wasn't good enough. For a franchise that's so deeply reliant on community engagement and has always provided a platform for clans and groups of like-minded players to grow together and enjoy the games that have been produced in the franchise, Battlefield 1 was just a monumental step backwards. I know clans and communities that existed in Battlefield 4 that have since disbanded because of the lack of support for them in Battlefield 1, and a few of them have even returned to playing Battlefield 4 because there, they have the control that they want and need for their servers. Battlefield 2018, whatever the game happens to be, needs to win back those lost players and bring to the table a robust set of controls and features that enable those admins to run their own communities and create their own experiences within the game. DICE and EA tried to create a more uniform experience for Battlefield 1, and looking back at the last 18 months of gameplay that I've gone through in this title, I now believe that was a mistake. When you allow players to create their own experiences, more often than not, those players will find a home within the game they like to play. Maybe they find a set of servers that they really like to play on because it's their favourite combination of settings, or you're always playing the same game mode on the same maps. It really sometimes can be that simple. Or maybe a player meets another group of like-minded players, and they end up joining a clan through the game that they like to play. 
those kinds of players return to the game time after time after time because they like coming back and enjoying that experience. Unfortunately, Battlefield 1 just didn't offer that level of support to the people who needed it, and clearly that decision was a detriment to the performance of the game over time. So there you have it. That's why I think Battlefield 4 will live on longer than Battlefield 1. There are tools in place for communities to grow and run themselves, and we don't need DICE or EA to interfere with that whatsoever. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments though. Maybe you're a player who's left Battlefield 1 and returned to Battlefield 4, or maybe you're a player who stopped playing Battlefield games altogether. I'd love to hear what you have to say on this topic. If you enjoyed this video though, leave it a like. If you didn't like it, you can click dislike if you want to. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. But thank you very much for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.